So anyway, I'm thrilled to be back here in New York. I love how certain things about New York never change. They're always constant. They're always there for you. The cabbies and the B.O. <laughs> what is with the B.O. and these guys? How long are these shifts? <laughs> Can't we get this man a 10-minute break for a shower? <laughs> You're in the back. It's coming through the glass. You're just going, what, what in the world? And then I love when they put that cherry poppet stuff on the dashboard. So you get the cherry B.O. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Even fruit showers more often than this. The funny thing to me about being in these cabs is that when you're in Manhattan, for some reason, you don't get scared no matter how fast the guy goes. Well, you know, he's driving fast and recklessly, but, but he's a professional. He's got a cab driver's license. I can see it right there. I don't even know what it takes to get a cab driver's license. I think all you need is a face. <laughs> this seems to be their big qualification. No blank heads are allowed driving cabs in this town. Also helps to have a name with like eight consonants in a row. You ever see some of the letters in these names? What is the O with the line through it, by the way? What planet is that from? You need a chart of the elements if you want to report the guy. Yes, officer, his name was Amal, and then the symbol for boron. No, it was not manganese. I had the periodic chart with me at the time. But I love to travel. I love it whether it's a car or it's a plane. I like to get out there. I like to keep it moving. I love airports. Feel safe in airports, thanks to the high-caliber individuals we have working at X-Ray Security. <laughs> How about this crack squad of savvy, motivated personnel? <laughs> the way you want to set up your airport security is you want the short, heavy-set woman at the front with the skin-tight uniform. <laughs> That's your first line of defense. You want those pants so tight, the flap in front of the zipper has pulled itself open. You can see the metal tangs hanging on for dear life. Then you put the bag on the conveyor belt, goes through the little luggage car wash. Then you have that other genius down at the other end looking in the little x-ray TV screen. This Einstein has chosen to stand in front of x-rays 14 hours a day as his profession looking in that thing. I, I have looked in that TV screen. I cannot make out one object. He's standing there. What is that, a hair dryer with a scope on it? That looks okay. Keep it moving. Some sort of bowling ball candle. Yeah, I got no problem with that. Just, you know, we don't want to hold up the line. So I go to the bathroom in the airport. What, what is the story on the sinks? in airport bathrooms, that they will not give us a twisted on, twisted off human style faucet. Is that too risky for the general population? Too dangerous? We better install the one-handed, spring-loaded, pain-in-the-ass Alcatraz style faucets. You know those ones where you gotta go, hey, boy, I got a little water there. Oh, another couple drops. What is it that they think we would do with a faucet? Turn them all on full, run out into the parking lot, laughing, pushing each other into the bushes. Come on, the water's on, let's go. I turned it on full blast. You idiot, we're businessmen. We're gonna miss our plane. Who cares? Water! That's how they think we'll behave. Do the people that work in these little shops in the airport have any idea what the prices are every place else in the world? Yeah, $14 tuna sandwich. We think that's fair. That's what we charge in our country. Then you get on the plane. Pilot, of course, always has to come on the PA system. This guy's so excited about being a pilot, he can't even stand himself. Well, I'm going to take it up to about 20,000. And I'm going to make a left by Pittsburgh. And I'm going to make a right by Chicago. Then I'm going to bring it down to 15,000. You know, he's giving you the whole route, all his moves. We're in the back going, yeah, fine, that's all. You know, just do whatever the hell you got to do. I don't know. Just, you know. 
end up where it says on the ticket, really, is <laughs> our only concern. Do I bother him with what I'm doing, knocking on the cockpit door? I'm having the peanuts now. Yeah, that's what we're doing back here. Thought I'd keep you posted. I'm not gonna have them all now, I'm just gonna have a few. I don't wanna finish it because it's such a big bag. Then the stewardesses have to come out, they have to do their little emergency equipment show, you know, that thing they do. One of them reads it, the other one acts it out. Hey, we have seat belts and oxygen masks. Things for you to use. They show you how to use a seat belt in case you haven't been in a car since 1965. Oh, you lift up on the buckle. Oh. I was trying to break the metal apart. I thought that's how it I was gonna try and tear the fabric part of the belt. I thought if I could just get it started. <laughs> then they always point out the emergency eggs. It's always with that very vague point though, isn't it? Where the, where the hell would these places be, would you say? Planes at a 90 degree, degree angle, your hair is on fire, you're looking for this. How do you think you're gonna do there? She's thinking, I'm getting out before you're getting out. <laughs> you're dead, you're dead, I'm gone. <laughs> then they always have to close that first class curtain too. And they always give you that little look. Maybe if you had worked a little harder. I wouldn't have to do this. <laughs> it's a whole tiny world on the airplane, isn't it? There's always that little tiny table there, a tiny computer, everyone's in a little cramped seat, tiny food, tiny utensils, tiny liquid bottles, tiny bathroom, tiny sink, tiny mirror, tiny faucet. So it's a small problem, gonna be a slight delay, we're gonna be a little late. I always go in the airplane bathroom. Even if I don't have to go, I gotta go in there. It's nice, it's like your own little apartment on the plane, isn't it? Go in there, lock the door, the light comes on after a second. It's like a little surprise party. But I'm always impressed with the amount of equipment that they have in that place. I mean, it's little, but they got the tissues, towels, closets, compartments, tiny slot for used razor blades. They always have that. Who is shaving on the plane? And shaving so much, they're using up razor blades? Is this what's happening? What is the wolf man flying in there for Christ's sakes? Who could shave that much? Her. <laughs> so I'm supposed to go down to Florida next week after we're done here. That's where all my uh, relatives live. I don't really want to go. Florida, a lot of old people down there. You know, they live in those minimum security prisons. That's where they put all the old people. What's with all the security there, with the guard gate, with the arm coming down, everyone's got a uniform, guns. Are the old people trying to escape, or are people stealing old people? What is the security problem? I just can't drive around there. You know how the old people drive? They drive slow, they sit low. That is their motto. State flag of Florida should be just a steering wheel with a hat and two knuckles on it. And that left turn signal on for when they left the house that morning. <laughs> That's a legal turn in Florida. It's known as an eventual left. <laughs> you can signal this week, turn any following year of your life. I love airports. Feel safe in airports, thanks to the high caliber individuals we have working at X-ray security. 
How about this crack squad of savvy, motivated personnel? <laughs> the way you want to set up your airport security is you want the short, heavyset woman at the front with the skin-tight uniform. <laughs> That's your first line of defense. You want those pants so tight, the flap in front of the zipper has pulled itself open. You can see the metal tangs hanging on for dear life. Then you put the bag on the conveyor belt, goes through the little luggage car wash. Then you have that other genius down at the other end looking in the little x-ray TV screen. This Einstein has chosen to stand in front of x-rays 14 hours a day as his profession. Looking in that thing. I, I have looked in that TV screen. I cannot make out one object. He's standing there. What is that, a hair dryer with a scope on it? That looks okay. Keep it moving. Some sort of bowling ball candle. Yeah, I got no problem with that. Just, you know, we don't want to hold up the line. So I go to the bathroom in the airport. What, what is the story on the sinks? in airport bathrooms, that they will not give us a twisted on, twisted off human style faucet. Is that too risky for the general population? Too dangerous? We better install the one-handed, spring-loaded, pain-in-the-ass Alcatraz style faucets. You know those ones where you gotta go, hey, whore, I got a little water there. Oh, another couple drops. What is it that they think we would do with a faucet? Turn them all on full, run out into the parking lot, laughing, pushing each other into the bushes. Come on, the water's on, let's go. I turned it on full blast. You idiot, we're businessmen, we're gonna miss our plane. Who cares, water? That's how they think we'll behave. Do the people that work in these little shops in the airport have any idea what the prices are every place else in the world? Yeah, $14 tuna sandwich. We think that's fair. That's what we charge in our country. Then you get on the plane. Pilot, of course, always has to come on the PA system. This guy's so excited about being a pilot, he can't even stand himself. Well, I'm going to take it up to about 20000 and I'm gonna make a left by Pittsburgh. Then I'm gonna make a right by Chicago. Then I'm gonna bring it down to 15,000. Know, giving you the whole route, all his moves. We're in the back going, yeah, fine, that's all. <laughs> you know, just do whatever the hell you gotta do. I don't know. Just end up where it says on the ticket, really, is <laughs> our only concern. Do I bother him with what I'm doing, knocking on the cockpit door? I'm having the peanuts now. Yeah, that's what we're doing back here. Thought I'd keep you posted. I'm not gonna have them all now, I'm just gonna have a few. I don't wanna finish it because it's such a big bag. Then the stewardesses have to come out, they have to do their little emergency equipment show, you know, that thing they do. One of them reads it, the other one acts it out. <laughs> hey, we have seat belts and oxygen masks. Things for you to use. <laughs> they show you how to use a seat belt in case you haven't been in a car since 1965. <laughs> oh, you lift up on the buckle. Oh. I was trying to break the metal apart. I thought that's how it works. I was gonna try and tear the fabric part of the belt. I thought if I could just get it started. Then they always point out the emergency eggs. It's always with that very vague point though, isn't it? Where the, where the hell would these places be, would you say? Planes at a 90 degree, degree angle, your hair is on fire, you're looking for this. How do you think you're gonna do there? She's thinking I'm getting out before you're getting out. 
You're dead, you're dead, I'm gone. <laughs> then they always have to close that first class curtain, too. And they always give you that little look. Maybe if you had worked a little harder. I wouldn't have to do this. <laughs> it's a whole tiny world on the airplane, isn't it? There's always that little tiny table there, a tiny computer, everyone's in a little cramped seat, tiny food, tiny utensils, tiny liquor bottles, tiny bathroom, tiny sink, tiny mirror, tiny faucet. So it's a small problem, going to be a slight delay, we're going to be a little late. I always go in the airplane bathroom. Even if I don't have to go, I gotta go in there. It's nice. It's like your own little apartment on the plane, isn't it? <laughs> go in there, lock the door, the light comes on after a second. It's like a little surprise party. <laughs> but I'm always impressed with the amount of equipment that they have in that place. I mean, it's little, but they got the tissues, towels, closets, compartments. Tiny slot for used razor blades. <laughs> they always have that. Who is shaving on the plane? <laughs> and shaving so much, they're using up razor blades? Is this what's happening? What is the wolf man flying in there for Christ's sakes? Who could shave that much? Candy was my whole life when I was a kid. That was the first 10 years of my life. I think the only clear thought I had was get candy. <laughs> that was it. Family, friends, school. They're just obstacles in the way of the candy. I'm out for the candy here. I'm just thinking, get candy, get candy, get candy, get candy, get candy. That's why you have to teach kids not to take candy from a stranger if they're playing in a playground because they're such candy moron idiot brains. It's just, this man has candy, I'm going with him. Goodbye, I don't care what happens to me. Get candy, get candy, get candy, get candy. <laughs> Don't go, they'll torture you, they'll kidnap you. It doesn't matter, he has an old Henry, I have to take that chance. Get candy, get candy, get candy. So the first time you hear the, the concept of Halloween, when you're a kid, your brain can't even process the information. You can, you're like, what, what is this, what did you say? So what did you say about giving out candy? Who was giving out candy? Everyone that we know is just giving out candy? Are you kidding me? When is this happening? Where? Why? Take me with you. I, I gotta be a part of this. I'll do anything that they want. I can wear that. <laughs> I'll wear anything I have to wear. I'll do anything I have to do to get the candy from those fools that are so stupidly giving it away. So the first couple of years, I made my own costumes, which of course suck, the ghost, the hobo, no good. <laughs> then finally, third year, begging the parents, got the Superman Halloween costume, not surprisingly. <laughs> Cardboard box, cellophane top, mask included. Remember the rubber band on the back of that mask? That was a quality item there, wasn't it? <laughs> that was good for about 10 seconds before it snapped out of that cheap little staple they put it in there with. You go to your first house, trick or snap, it broke, I don't believe it. Wait up, you guys, I gotta fix it. Hey, wait up! Wait up! That's what kids say, they don't say wait. They say, wait up! Hey, wait up! Because when you're little, your life is up, the future is up, everything you want is up. Wait up, hold up, shut up. Mom, I'll clean up, let me stay up. Parents, of course, are just the opposite. Everything is down. Just calm down. <laughs> Slow down. Come down here. Sit down. Put that down. <laughs> so I had my little costume. I was physically ready. I was preparing myself. I did not try on the costume prior to Halloween. Do you remember this? This, this is an obscure one, but... On the side of the box, I remember this on my Superman costume, it actually said, do not attempt to fly. <laughs> they printed that as a warning 
because kids were putting it on and going off the roof. You know. I love the idea of the kid who's stupid enough to think he actually is Superman, but smart enough to check that box before he goes off the roof. Wait, let me see if it says anything about me being Superman. Oh, wait a second here. I... So anyway, but my hopes were up. I was thinking that this is probably the same exact costume that Superman wears himself. And you put these things on, it's not exactly the super fit that you are hoping for. It looks more like Superman's pajamas is what it looks like. It's all kind of loose and flowing and the neckline kind of comes down about there. Flimsy little ribbon string in the back. Plus my mother makes me wear my winter coat over the costume anyway. I don't recall Superman wearing a jacket. Not like I had cheap corduroy phony fur. Boy, I'm Superman, but it's a little chilly out, and I'm glad I've got this cheap little 10-year-old kid's jacket. So I'm going out, I'm trick-or-treating, but the mask, the rubber band keeps breaking, it keeps getting shorter. I'm fixing it, it's getting tighter and tighter on my face. You know when it starts slicing into your eyeballs there, and you're, you're trying to breathe through that little hole? <laughs> getting all sweaty. I can't see, I can't breathe, we gotta keep going, we gotta get the candy. <laughs> and a half hour into it, you just take that mask, oh, the hell with it. Bing bong, yeah, it's me, give me the candy. Yeah, I'm Superman, look at the pant legs, what do you care? Remember those last couple of years, trick-or-treating, getting a little too old for it? Still out there, going through the motions. Bing bong, come on, lady, let's go. Halloween doorbells, candy, let's pick it up in there. Come to the door, they always ask you those same stupid questions. What are you supposed to be? I'm supposed to be done by now. You want to move it along with the Three Musketeers? I got 18 houses on this block, sweetheart. Just hit the bag, we hit the road. That's the way it works. Sometimes they give you that little white bag twisted on the top. You know, that's going to be some crap candy. <laughs> Doesn't have the official Halloween markings on it. Hold it, lady. Wait a second. What is this? The orange marshmallow shaped like a big peanut? Do me a favor. You keep that one. <laughs> yeah, we have all the door stops we need already. Thank you. We're going for name candy only this year. Remember the first time you heard about Halloween? It's the idea of it is just more than a kid brain could even handle this information. <laughs> They're giving out what? <laughs> Who is giving out candy? Who? Who is giving out candy? <laughs> what do I have to do? Take me with you. I'll do anything that they want. I want to be a boy to be. <laughs> I can wear that. <laughs> I'll wear anything. Remember that Halloween mask? Remember the rubber band on the back of that Halloween mask? That was good for about 10 seconds before it snapped out of that cheap little staple they put it in there with. You go to your first house, trick or snap, it broke. Wait up! Wait up. And that mask, that was, was brutal too, trying to breathe through that little air hole there. Man, you use like a hole punch from a loose leaf thing. You know, I breathe through that for eight hours. <laughs> Got all sweaty in there. <laughs> and the mask kept snapping up. You have to keep fixing it. <laughs> Pulling the string through. It kept getting tighter and tighter. <laughs> so the thing is slicing into your eyeballs now. Can't breathe, can't see. Eventually your eyeballs pop out in front of the mask. <laughs> At that point you just take the mask and go, oh, the hell with it. <laughs> Bing bong, yeah, it's me! <laughs> Give me the candy, what do you care? <laughs> Stupid charade. They really got us trained to use that uh, cash machine now, don't they? I mean, uh, we just go right up to that thing and people are just, it's like we're like chickens in an experiment just waiting for that pellet to come down the chute, aren't right? you? You see people at the cash machine, they're just there. Just, just tick, 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 tick. Waiting for the sound, you know the sound, you're waiting for the sound. 
That's what we're trained to hear, the here comes the money sound, you know? <laughs> it's exciting, don't you get excited? It's coming, it's coming! They're giving me money! <laughs> Is anyone even working in the bank anymore? I mean, what are they doing? Is it just pretending, you know, shuffling papers around, talking on phones that aren't even plugged in, you know? <laughs> I think the bank building is just a charade that they have to keep going because they need that two feet of wall to hold up the cash machine. <laughs> I think my favorite dog thing is when you have to leave him in the car and he's just sitting there in the front seat. Because the dog, see, the dog body in the car seat is the only time that your head and his head are at the same height. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they, and they love when they're up there in the front. They go, this is more like it. <laughs> I think you and I should be together all the time. <laughs> Except when they turn, when you turn, they can't handle the turns, you know? I got no thumbs, take it easy! <laughs> These dogs stick their heads out the window. They, they love that in the car, don't they? I don't know what it does for them, but there is just no doubt that this is the thing. <laughs> you know, when they are doing that, I don't know what they're thinking, like, boy, if I could run this fast. <laughs> you know? I don't know what they're thinking. Does anybody have a dog where they clean up after him on the street? Do you do that? Really, you do? Well, yeah. You have to. You don't allow it at all. You don't allow it. <laughs> so how big is the dog right now? He's just... It's like a Hindenburg dog. You don't allow it. This, this dog is trained, ladies and gentlemen. You are not allowed to go. <laughs> used to send away for everything in the back of every single cold cereal box, even the prizes that were void were prohibited. <laughs> I took that risk. What do they want to prohibit a little bag of plastic monkeys? What is the danger? We don't want these monkeys in the Northwest. We want to avoid them in that area. Send away for it anyway. I used to have nightmares of police are going to come over my house. You order these little monkeys, son? Do you realize you're living in a prohibited zone here? These monkeys are void in this area. Used to be the box tops. You all remember sending in box tops. And then at one point, they switched to the proof of purchase seal. They didn't trust us with the box top. <laughs> Apparently they felt they needed more proof. <laughs> what happened, you think? Are we getting some forgeries down there at Battle Creek? <laughs> Run these Cocoa Puff lids through the infrared scanner one more time, Jim. <laughs> I think this little Timmy might be trying to pull a fast one. <laughs> but I think to me the scariest thing in food is that expiration date on the milk. They really, they scare you with it, you know? Do you ever have milk the day after the day? You know, and the spoon is trembling as it comes out of the spoon. It's after the day! How do they know that that is the exact day? You know what I mean? It's just so definite. They brand it right into the side of the cart. That's your day right there. Do the cows tip them off when they're milking them, you know? July 3rd. You think they sat around the Beef Association? How about uh, bonkers beef syndrome? What do you think of that? No, no, no. It doesn't sound serious enough. Um, silly meat condition. No, 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 no. Look, come on, Frank, it's 11. Let's get out of here. How about mad cow? Mad cow? All right, we're going with the mad cow. Just, you know, I don't, I don't know what the hell it is. We're doing a show where Elaine decides she has had it with the lines in the ladies' room. You know what I mean, ladies. Now, you hate those lines, don't you? And you look at the men's room and you think, they could go right in there. <laughs> so Elaine decides to do this. Anyway, that's what the show is about. But I, I like the idea of the women's room. You have a door that says women on it and women come right out of it. <laughs> what more do you want? Men say to me, where do you meet women? I say, there you go, there's a door. What could be clearer than that? <laughs> it says women, they gotta be in there. The men's room, on the other hand, is a nauseating, disgusting place, and every man in there is a revolting, perverted human slime. Men don't want to meet, relate, or deal with any other man in the men's room. We don't even use our hands. We touch everything with the feet. Toilets, faucets, handles. We become orangutan as soon as we go in that door. We would have put ropes in there so we could swing in, pee, swing out. I like the hand blower. It takes a little bit longer. But I feel when you're in a room with a sickening stench, you want to spend as much time as you can. You don't want to race out of there, you want to linger, socialize. Meet people, hey, nice shoes. Sorry I peed on them. 
<laughs> I don't think dry cleaners are doing it. You know, dry cleaning, as if that's even possible. <laughs> we all accept it. Well, I'm going to get this dry cleaned. I'll take it to the dry cleaner. That's just part of the language, and we all assume this is being done. How? What are they doing? Dry. What could you do dry? <laughs> totally dry to get something clean. I give you a shirt. It's got a tomato stain on it. Uh, get it out. Dry. What are you going to do? I want to see what you're going to do. Tap it, shake it, blow on it. What can you do to clean something dry? <laughs> we had a show where a dry cleaner was uh, wearing something of mine, which I think that they do. Why wouldn't they? You know what I mean? But imagine bumping into your dry cleaner at a party and he's wearing your sweater. Wouldn't that be a moment? You see him over there. What the hell are you doing? That better be ready by tomorrow. I'm coming in. <laughs> to me, marriage is like the roller coaster and, and the engagement is like that first hill when it's just starting, you know? And you're just going click, 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 click. It's scary, the anticipation, you know, just, and it always has that little ch chunk it falls back a little, you know, you go, what was that? My parents, oh my God, click, 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 click. Get to the top, they give you the ring and the piece of cake, and you go. Do you ever think about the life of clothes? What is the life of clothes, really? What does it come down to? It's waiting, isn't it, more than anything else? In the closet, in the hamper, in the drawer. The shirt's in your closet right now going, he never picks me. They're either on you or home, hoping to get picked tomorrow. <laughs> and their whole existence is just a steady decline, isn't it? I mean, when they first come in the house, they're new. They got price tags. Maybe they're wrapping a little tissue paper. They're the big stars. But then after a while, they start to fall out of the rotation. They're in the back of the closet. They're as warm. It's so tragic. One day, they're being shown off at parties, nightclubs. <laughs> Next day, they're used to get a clean paint out of a paintbrush. <laughs> you go from New Year's Eve to hanging out of a car's gas tank pipe, flapping down the highway. <laughs> what kind of life is that? <laughs> You've never done the TV guy crossword puzzle? You know, it's always like, the Dick Van Dyke blank. <laughs> Another crack. You look, you look Here's the thing. How many times have you seen chicken of the sea, tuna, and never stopped to go, what the hell kind of insulting name is? What do they think? I don't know what the hell a fish is. What are they? Chicken of the sea. So, well, you think of it as, as a chicken. Okay. In the sea. It's not really a chicken, of course, but you think of it as a chicken. Because we don't want to go through the whole explanation of aquatic life to you idiots. So think of it as kind of like a chicken, but in the water. Do you remember when uh, a couple years ago we had to save the three stupidest whales in the entire world up there in Canada? They were under that frozen lake. We'll go under the ice. Do -do -do -do. I mean, aren't there some intelligent whales that we can help out? Do we have to always help these idiots? <laughs> da -da -da, we'll go under, swimming along. Bonk. Ow. Da -da 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 -da. I read the scientists estimated it would take these whales six extra months to complete the migration down to Mexico. The, the idiots. I mean, the other whales would have to be going, hey, where were you guys? And the stupid whales would go, did you see us on TV? <laughs> that was us! We didn't know where we were! We're doing a show this week where uh, there's a couple of interesting storylines. One of them is that I'm involved with a masseuse. Masseuse? 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 And what is plural? Masseuse. Masseuse. Masseur. Thank you very much. You are dismissed from the SAT finals here. We will not need you for the college ball reunion. I don't know. What is the plural of masseuse? Is it like a male is it? Masseuse, is it? masseuse is female. Masseur is male. But what's, what's the plurals? Masseurs? 
Masseuses? Masseusai. Probably the same. It's the same for both. Like fish. It's like fish. One fish, two fish. So I, I was talking to a bunch of masseuse today, that's what you say? I don't think so. But who's ever doing that, though? It doesn't come up that often that you meet a bunch of masseuse. I love those ads late at night for the, uh, well, the Craftmatic, <laughs> you know, the contour chair. Get your legs up, you know, get your knees back. But it's always sold with the fitness perspective, you know. Are you suffering from weak muscles, bad back, poor circulation? You're probably not lying down enough. <laughs> what you need is one of these... <laughs> And get a thing where you have to do that. You know, get the automatic. <laughs> or you ever see the one with the chair that's got the motor in the cushion that just launches your ass right out of it? <laughs> they got that old woman who takes her like 45 minutes. <laughs> the time she's up, she can't remember why she got up. She just said, I mean, isn't that dangerous? Couldn't that short circuit or something? Well, good night, Grandma. <laughs> oh, grandma, Grandma went to bed. She uh, she was tired. She went to bed. She she went through the wall. She was really anxious to get to bed. You see the cutout. You know. See, one of my favorite advertising things that that, that I see them do is this: uh, no payments until March. Have you ever seen this? How stupid are we supposed to be? Like, oh. Oh, March. It'll never be March. The guy in March, he'll pay for it. Whoever he is, I, I don't have any money, but in March, uh, there'll be money. Some, that guy will pay. Um, I had to visit somebody in the hospital. It's always uh, tough visiting someone in the hospital. You're walking down that corridor. You don't want to get a real good look into any of those rooms as you're walking, you know? Isn't, isn't it amazing how you only really care about your person when you're in the ho visit someone in the hospital, you know? You meet the person in the next bed. You want them to get better. But if they don't, hey, that's a break. <laughs> Why can't the people in the hospital wear their own pajamas? Why do all the patients have to dress alike? Are they a team? I don't think so. Pajamas and TV. That's how you get over any illness. This system has been working for you your entire life, and then when you're in the hospital and you really want to get better, you have no pajamas, the TV's on the ceiling, and the hospital wonders why half the people don't make it. The only way, you know, that men have been at all able to even the score on this fake orgasm thing is that it was a man that invented the cubic zirconia. That balances it out a little bit. You can't tell, we can't tell, we're even. What would you say is the uh, dumbest Winter Olympic event? Ballerina skiing. Ballerina skiing? Yeah, that's dumb. I've never heard of that one. Ballerina skiing? Which, snow bowling? Yeah, that's a good one, snow bowling. Yes, they actually have snow bowling. They have a captain and they roll the ball and then they have to like push it with the Oh, where they sweep in front of it. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like a maid competition there with the <laughs> I like the luge. You know the luge? The luge is uh it's the it's the one that's done on the bobsled run, but it's the, the guy's not even on a sled. It's just it's just Bob is what it is. It's just it's literally Bob. And uh, he's hanging on for his life. And I, I, I feel like you could have people competing in this sport against their will, and the times would be pretty much the same. <laughs> you just grab people, you put them in the helmet so you wouldn't hear them screaming, you throw them down the thing, and they're in the loosh. Who would even know the difference? Just, uh, You can't see them doing anything. You know, or they aim their feet or something. It's so stupid. Or the biathlon, you know this one? This is the one that combines cross-country skiing with shooting a gun. <laughs> How many alpine snipers are into this? It's like combining swimming and strangle a guy. Why don't we have that? That makes as much sense to me.